the most valuable piece of information, knowledge, wisdom that we can share today uh, is to say to golfers, when you get to the tee, ask yourself that most valuable question. Where do I want the ball to start? How do I want it to fly? Pull the club for the shot. Make the rehearsal. Step in. Hit it. Accept it. Put the club back in the bag and walk after it. And what happens when you get to the ball again? Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Top Golf Podcast number two. Today, we're going to talk about how you're going to finish your season strong. We have about five to six weeks left of the season, and today I'm going to ask my fellow golf coaches and myself, hopefully, how we are going to recommend, advise, share our knowledge yeah. with the Norwegian golfers, mm -hmm. beginner to advanced golfer, how we believe in this time uh, that you're going to. Uh, put into good practice and finish the season strong and have your best finish ever. Um, so Marielle, would you like to share with us what you think about that? Well, first of all, I think it's a time where we should play as much golf as we possibly can before we go in. Because obviously we can't be playing out on the golf course when we get back inside. It's not the same thing. So first of all, I just want to recommend everybody to start playing more to finish off. Mm. Don't you agree with that? I agree 100%. It's a great opportunity to map out your weaknesses, what yeah. you should work on during the winter. Right, mm -hmm. so spend time really playing and paying more attention to what you should focus on in this mm -hmm. off season. Okay, so I'm an observer. Yeah. Uh, I come here every day, <laughs> actually, and I go and get my balls from the driving range. Mm -hmm. yeah. I walk up and down, and something that strikes me, and this is not at people or golfers, golfers, um, but at you, at me. <laughs> it's hard to say that. Now. <laughs> so I'm always hopefully switched on when I'm walking over the down range. And I'm watching golfers, obviously, because I'm interested in what they're doing. Yeah. So right. what do you see and what can you share? Hmm. Not as a, an attack on any golfers. No. But in golf in general. <laughs> what do you notice how, let's start with the driving range, how yeah. people are practicing on the driving range. And obviously what Mario just said, we want to spend as uh, limited time as possible on the driving range and as much time on the course, but that's hard to get people to stop going there. Yeah. Right. A nice warm up or, or whatever, people want to hit some shots. But what do you see people doing when they're on the driving range? How productive is it what they're doing? Well, I don't think it's that productive, to be honest, because I see people just like hitting shots, getting frustrated. They don't really do the routine. They don't really do like full preparation of the shots they're trying to hit. They just hit ball after ball after ball. Mm. Don't you agree with that? I agree. That's mostly what I see, though. I think a great way to actually make that more productive yeah. is try to emulate what you would experience on a golf course, right? right? You could actually try to bring the golf course in your head to the range. That's hard to do for some people, visualize things, but it's a great way to actually mm. get yourself into that situation mm. or try to emulate that. Mm. Mm. How about you, Mark? What do you see? Well, I think we've got a chance to create something unique here. Of course, mm. that's mm. what I would always say. But, yeah. you know, I would really like to change the way golfers approach their practice. So how many balls would I give them or, you know, 30, 60? What do we have here? 30, 60 and 90? No, uh, 30, 30, 45, 60. or 60. Right. Mm -hmm. So I would say get the least amount of golf balls, 30. Yep. And I would say get the token, put it in the machine and put the basket of balls behind the bay. Mm -hmm. And I would start there. And I would say maybe have 10 golf swings that you, um, that you uh, with no ball, that yep. you intend to make. So if you want to practice your swing, spend, spend 10 swings on the mat with no ball and make them as perfect as you can. That's your technique practice gone. Yep. You've done it. What your coach has told you to do, stand on the mat and rehearse the swing that you want to make, that's it, leave it at that. Yeah, because you kind of want to get into that feeling of feeling what you're supposed to do and what you're working on rather than just hit shot after shot after shot. Because obviously, when you do that, you don't really engage. do what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's engage. your chance. That's dead hard for people to do. It is. Right. That could be a good start. Shadow swing, I call it. Right. Make the shadow swings you want. Practice putting the club in the position you want to put it in, and then it's done. It's done. Right. I always say to my golfers, the first ball and the last ball oh, the most are the most important balls. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if people can approach it that way, because if this first ball meant everything to me, I'm going to have 10 or 12 rehearsals. <laughs> so what you could do is you could start with your first hole at your golf club, and you could say, right, it's driver down the right, touch your draw. Right. Tee the ball up, stand behind it, make as many rehearsals as you can of the exact motion that's going to start the ball down the right and draw it back. Right. Switch your brain off, mm -hmm. walk in and hit it. Accept the consequence, put the club back in the bag. And what I would recommend in your practice is you don't hit another one straight away. You start putting some spacing in there mm -hmm. and give yourself a chance to reflect. Right. Yeah. Reflection know? is really important right. though. Seeing what happens, think about what happened, why it did what it did. Yeah. And I like to say to my golfers, have a notebook 
and write down driver pull hooked it in the woods <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> or whatever in, in the range. middle of the fairway right. drive it down of course i'd hit the middle and um and then from there i would say use those notes next time you're out on the golf course and, the la- and you know you hit your driver last hole you've forgotten what you did get your notebook out right driver close the face a little bit right on this practice ring i'll keep the face square mm-hmm. and along the lines of what ken was saying about how to practice that's how i'd hit those 30 balls and at every Every shot would be different, every club would be different, and I'd put a gap between the shots. So go and get the ball, put it on the mat, look down the range, create a shot, visualize that, rehearse that move, execute it, self-reflect, write it down, start again. That would be the most powerful practice session it is. anybody in this driving range will have. Is that what we see today when we're walking No, no by no, far, no. by far. You said something that was really important there, I think, and I think it's nice to press on it again never hit twice the same shot yeah right because you don't experience that on a golf course unless you hit other bounds right. i guess right. but, you're never uh, gonna hit you're right but that doesn't happen so it's really about trying to get yourself engaged to that playing mode right. while a practice what do you think about trying to like shot shape a little bit when you're on a driving range as well though? trying to like hit a fade trying to hit a draw trying to hit a straight one i mean that does kind of like change it up a little bit too you're not hitting the same shot every time yeah. you can create that with the you shot shape around and play mm-hmm down the right touch your draw. But what I would recommend to golfers is they do, I mean, we, we gave a bit of a serious approach there, I yeah. guess. But if you're serious about improving, I would say what we're practicing on the driving range is not what you're facing on the course. This is one of the sports, I would say, that we don't, we don't, you practice know, we're practice, place. yeah, we're not practicing in the right place. No. So um, and it does have a place for everybody and it's hard to take people away from the range. So what I would say, if you um, change it up a little bit in your practice, why don't you come to the driving range to to say, this practice session is going to be about exploration. I'm going to develop, I'm going to go to the range, I'm going to get 60 balls this time, like Marielle said, and I'm I'm going to hit as many different shots as I can with all my clubs, and on this one I'm going to open the club face and hit a big slice, on this one I'm going to hit a big draw, on this one I'm going to hit a low one. Uh, No. And have some fun in, in, in trying to create some skill. Yeah, and there's a great future on the range for that mm-hmm. virtual golf yeah right, that's on, the, right. on the top tracer yeah you yeah, can actually choose golf play. courses so and actually you do on that? see the shots you can actually play a golf course St yeah. Andrews is there yeah. Pebble Beach is there mm. uh, and then you sort of just like ones. choose these different targets out on the driving range to yeah. aim at so it sort of like becomes it different mm-hmm. you don't aim at the same target all the time fantastic right. okay so we've got the range we've got how we practice on the range so we're saying limited balls yeah. make every shot count be creative have some fun mm. uh, and engage in and play your home golf course if you want yeah. to what about when we move towards the first tee we've got the chipping green and the putting green I Matt. just want to kind of say too like standing over there hitting too many shots into the mat as well can kind of produce injuries as well you mm. can get the golfing elbow or whatever mm. because hitting down in the mat so much it gets sort of this vibration into the hand and the wrist, which isn't good. So like generally talking to every golfer as well, it's not so good to stand out there hitting balls after balls because it's generally not good for you. Well, it's not the game either, is no, it? No, but it, you're only hitting one shot at the time on the golf course anyways. Do you hit the mat, Mariel? Do you hit the mat? She just right? in. You just hit it perfect, <laughs> Just you? perfect. I can see just that, Mariel. Clean. What a golfer. I still hit off the mats, but I'm not standing okay, there for two hours. Okay, how's your low cut? Come on, tell us. If I gave you a shot now, hit me a low cut, could you produce it? A low cut? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> you don't believe it. Skill on demand. Skill. You know, and that, what you could say to golfers is, is, is raise your competence level. That's why yeah. you'd be there. Mm-hmm. Raise your competence level, feel good about it, and move on. Right, okay, back to my, my question. Yeah. We've got the putting green here. Mm-hmm. Let's start with the putting green. How would you tell the golfers before they played to practice their putting before they went out? Well, for the end of the season, what would you recommend would be a nice little routine that wouldn't take too much time that would help Let's golfers hold more? Mm-hmm. Let's say three put less. How would you how would you tell golfers to practice uh, their putting so they would hit less putts on the green? Less putts. I would first of all think of the main things to actually three putt less. Mm-hmm. It's going to be speed and actually reading the green correctly. Speed, yeah. But what do you think about short putts though? Because obviously, if you're hitting it close but you're struggling yeah. around from inside two meters, it's still going to be kind of tough. It is going to be tough. What do you think about that, Mark? Uh, do you think it's I would good say to, like, if I do... had 30 minutes before I played, right. there's Mark going again, yep. <laughs> on his high horse, <laughs> right <laughs> away. Okay, so if we had 30 minutes, I yeah. would say forget the range. Sorry, Top Golf. Forget the range, and I would say go straight to the putting green and, well, actually, let's, let's, let's change it up. One ball only, hmm? one ball only, and I would say as move around every time from one meter, hit 20 puts, 10 puts or 20 puts from mm-hmm. one meter. Create a personal best. 
how many today from one meter did I get out of 10? Write it down on your phone, PB. Hopefully you got more than eight and we're yeah. doing good. Mm -hmm. And then I would say write 10, 10 two As meter a goal. puts. Uh, how, personal best on the phone, write it down. And then I would say um, hit a 10 foot or a 12 foot put a couple of times and then hit two 25 meter puts twice. Mm -hmm. That way you're more than likely at practicing what you're gonna face because yeah, because you don't have the same putt every time, no. and you're having a variety of distances, right. right? You don't have the same distance all the time, so it's like kind of important to like right. feel or have a feel for all of them before you go out. And I think that is actually key, also, the confidence level you get, yeah. right, from making those short putts yeah. before you actually get to the golf course. Yeah. And the first of all, how many times you actually faced with a par putt one straight meter away? You miss that straight away, then yeah. you're gone. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I right. remember from my professional career as well when I go out in preparation or prepare myself for a tournament round I would always like go around the hole and try to make a couple of like one two three meters and try to make them because it's important because Sport. if I make a lot of putts within three meters I'm gonna score well can, most likely can you remember that yeah it's quite a long time ago wasn't it <laughs> come on it's not that long it's been it a corona ago. time <laughs> that's correct that's correct what about the, part, the chipping part Chipping part. I always yeah. love my little game, uh, my own game that I created. Oh my god! <laughs> no, Tell us about really. it. Um, well, I'm I'm all about trying to create the game in practice, yeah. and you know I I like to say to some of the golfers I coach, uh, if you still got your half an hour, um, I would take one ball, what uh, all your wedges or all your clubs because you can use them all around the green. You yeah. now see golfers using three woods and five woods and rescues from from the edges of the greens on the tours. So I would recommend that you take one ball and you play what I call uh, nine up and downs. Mm. So you're gonna play nine holes, you go about two meters off the edge of the green, you drop the ball down and you try and chip it on and hold the putt. So for everybody listening, if you're, some people are a chip putt, some yep. people are a chip putt putt, and some, some people chip, are a chip, chip, chip putt putt putt. putt. <laughs> so Somebody is just chip in. Yeah, that's, well, that's, what that's you, that's you, that's you Mario, <laughs> national champion. That's why you, you were so good. <laughs> Well, that's the strongest part of my game. It cool. Is, yeah. So I would say if you can create nine holes from around the green, again, personal best it, drop the ball, get behind it, picture where you want the ball to end up, preferably in the hole, make some practice runs with the club you choose, chip it on, mark the ball, go through your full putting routine, try and hold it. I would say you are simulating the game. Yep. So when you miss the first green, you are, you, you're ready to go. You get yourself in game mode. You're already switched on. You've practiced it and you it's know how familiar. you familiar. It's very right. familiar. So. What we're trying to suggest in your practice before you head to the course is simulate the game. Yeah, yeah. make Sim it as real as possible yeah. as you would have it on the golf course. Yeah, and that way, you know, you've got a good chance of getting, you know, because I always say if, you, if you've practiced that, if you've got nine out of ten one meter putts, you're going to feel pretty confident on the first hole when you you've will. got a five footer, you four will. footer, five footer. Well, we all know confidence yeah. is key. It's key. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it's a great way to actually map it out, yeah. your weaknesses. If you see, right, like you said, ten balls. Yeah. out of 10 meters okay oh yeah. i'm only making three of them hmm something's yeah. off here i have to work yeah. on this yes you get a right. nice stats on that too you right because yeah. you get to see what actually happens yeah or at least you get something that you can evaluate where you need to practice or where you need to get better it also makes you have better like ways to like set goals for the next season as well okay this season this is what i'm doing at the end and then you know you can improve that over the winter mm. so what we're suggesting is, is if you've got an hour, you could fit all that in an hour before you, you played. If you've Easily. only got half an hour, we're saying, do your Marielle dynamic warm up in the car park, stretch your body, get yourself ready, <laughs> and head to the chipping and putting green and, and focus on the scoring part of the game and make some swings, practice swings before you tee off. What about, about uh, time then, about how much you should play now, between now and the end of the season? Um, how would you approach that? What would you say to the golfers? I think that's a Playing time, <laughs> yeah. Of course, it varies from person to person, right? Mm. According to how much I have, how much time they have. Mm. But I would try to is, to squeeze as much time on the golf course as I possibly could, mm. right? That's gonna give you a great idea of where your game is, right? Just standing on the range, hitting balls after balls is not really gonna do too much because the season is pretty much coming to an end. Mm. But being on the golf course is gonna give you an idea of what you should be focusing on for next season. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's good to be out on the golf course, sort of get your mindset, where am I right now? Where do I want to go next? Um, and then sort of, when you play a lot, you can sort of get yourself a score, you see where you're at. You can make like small notes on your stats, what you're doing, fairway hits, green hits, putts, and then sort of just make it going into a plan 
for the winter season, so you sort of know why you want to attack. Mm. That's the right way to say it. Mm. Uh, I'm thinking that, you know, when you think about when you go to the golf course, um, you get on the first tee and you face with a shot. What question do you think you should ask yourself when you get on the first tee? What would be, what would be a logical question that you'd think that you'd ask yourself when you get on the first tee? What do I want the ball to do? What do exactly. I want the ball to do? So what we're going to suggest to golfers is, okay, when you get to the golf course, we'd like you to try and approach your last five weeks of the season, six weeks, however long's left, this way. Get on the first tee. What do I want to do with the golf ball? Where do I want the ball to start? What sort of shot do I want to hit here? And then what would you do once you've got that? We would actually try to rehearse the movement that will actually give you that. Right, so you'd make the motion that would produce the shot. Yeah. Right. And that is something. Do we see that? No, you no. just people trying to make the most perfect swing right. in their head mm. and just expecting that ball to finish close mm. to the hole. Yeah, but if you don't think, plan it out, well, most how are you time you it? see them actually just going and just hit the ball. They don't really plan the shot either. No. They don't have a strategy. They don't. Yeah. If you ask them afterwards, oh, what was your plan? They they can't even know. answer that. What I actually noticed many times is that they some actually plan the shot, yeah. but they rehearse something totally different. And that's mind-boggling. Why are you planning something and rehearsing something that's going to give you something different? Mm. That doesn't make sense. Yeah. So hopefully what the most valuable piece of information, knowledge, wisdom that we can share today uh, is to say to golfers, when you get to the tee, ask yourself that most valuable question. Where do I want the ball to start? How do I want it to fly? Pull the club for the shot. Make the rehearsal. Step in. Hit it accept it put the club back in the bag and walk after it and what happens when you get to the ball again when you find your ball and you've got to it it's on the green mr green in the hole or whatever what are you going to say to yourself it's the same thing over again the same thing over again it is and are you likely to play the same shot twice oh no no, no. never <laughs> unless you hit a bounce <laughs> so what we're suggesting is in in our is our analysis of this if you practice the way we say on the range so every shot has a different approach mm -hmm. it has a different um shot it's a different swing each time go to the putting green one ball practice on the putting green from a different position right to left puts mm -hmm. left to right puts uphill puts down downhill puts and then you go to the chipping green and you do your one chip and one put and then you're ready to go right. get to the golf course your mental strategy is to ask yourself uh, a switched on logical question that will bring you to the moment and not where your elbow would be in your golf swing or your inside back swing because the, what you want to do is rehearse a swing that would produce the shot right so i think it's all about face. just like getting the visual of what you want the ball to do and start seeing it visually in your head how you want the ball to react and what it does because the more information you have on how the shot is supposed to approach the easier it will be it's to easier to attack it and actually do it because you're way more committed right because mm -hmm. you know exactly what you're supposed to do and that's what you're seeing so then you're not scared of seeing something else or oh it's gonna end up in a bunker oh it's gonna end up in the water because you're so committed on what you're supposed to do right it is and if you don't <laughs> just try it again mm -hmm. right and what can you do you can't do anything. You know, it's either, it. did I do what I said I was going to do? Yes or no? Put the club in the bag and walk after it. Yeah. It sounds so simple. <laughs> it does. Um, it, that, that's lots of info shared, wisdom mm -hmm. uh, to our golfers. So I think it's time to call it a day. It is. Yep. Um, so thank you very much for listening. Um, I'd like to hear some feedback from everybody at Top Golf. So yeah. if you want to talk to me, uh, let's share our... Should we share our Instagrams? Yes, we can. Sure. I am at Mark Davis Golf. You're welcome to <laughs> find me on there and send me some um, questions or ask me anything about your game or tell me how you finished the season. Has the information we've shared today helped you? Mario? Yeah, I'm uh, Marielle O2. Um, also with me, you can DM me whatever you want to say. I am just glad to hear if you're doing well. I think it's cool if somebody just tells me about how their season is going in general. And I'll answer as much as I can about it. I am Ken Vilongir at Instagram. And uh, just ask me whatever you want. Golf-wise, <laughs> equipment-wise, whatever you need. What's, uh, to help. what's O2 stand for? O2. Yes, exactly. I always, wondered, I always wondered, what is O2? Yeah, well, everybody kind of thinks I'm born twice. in 2002 because of it, but it's not true. I don't know. I just had it forever and it just stayed with me, I guess. All right. <laughs> Thanks for joining. Thanks See you again soon.